Let us rise for the reading of this morning's sermon text recorded for us in the letter to the Galatians where we read from chapter 5. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. You my brothers and sisters were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh, for the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. This is the word of our Lord. Let us pray. Glorious and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight our only source of hope and comfort. Amen. Dear followers of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, did you get your steps in yesterday? It's a question I hear a lot of people asking. Or a lot of people very concerned with that 10,000 number. It's their goal, it's their target. Their entire day gets consumed sometimes with making sure that they accomplish their goal. They have devices that track this to make sure that they really are living up to what they want to do. I was thinking it's kind of a shame we can't come up with a Fitbit for our spiritual walk. Some app that reminds us of as we're going through the day, how we're truly doing God's word. What we're doing with God's word. How we're using it in our life. How we're exercising our faith. How we're reminding ourselves how important it is to be living as the children of God and to be walking by the Spirit, to put into practice the wonderful truths that we know. But then I suppose there would be people who would still find ways around that app or that device. The person I stood doing this one day, I asked them, what are you doing? I can add steps if I just swing my arm. And isn't that human nature? That we want to set goals for ourselves and yet we can still look for and find the easy ways out. Our flesh is truly weak when it comes to what we want to do. And it's not a problem of this modern age. It's always existed. That battle within us to do what is right. It was important for Paul as he wrote to the churches in Galatia for them to remember what they had been given. This blessing that they had been given from God of freedom from sin. The faith that had come to them by the power of the Holy Spirit to know and acknowledge and believe and trust and accept that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior 
And he is the one who has accomplished for them freedom. Freedom to be able to walk in his grace. No longer having our feet impaired by sin. Held in the shackles of Satan. Not being able to walk freely, stumbling, tripping, not being able to go after and follow God and be free. What a horrible condition we would think that is. We talk about that leash this morning in the children's message. We wouldn't fetter our animals in such a way, hobble them so that they can't move, so that they're entrapped. But yet that's what Satan has a hold on us. From the moment of our birth, his power and his control in using sin to keep us from God, to not being able to follow him, not being able to understand him. And yet it was Christ who came and walked as God desired. That perfect holy life according to God's word, keeping it in every aspect as the holy son of God, reminding us, that he was very different in that respect from you and from me. But thank and praise God that he was different because in living that perfect life, he became the perfect sacrifice for my sins, the perfect death to remove the punishment that I couldn't take from myself. No matter how hard I would try to rip those irons off my feet, or to break them with whatever power I thought that I had in myself, I couldn't do that. It was only by the almighty power of God, by Jesus sacrificing his life, that sin was paid for, that the punishment had been removed, that the shackles fell off instantly, miraculously, by the love and power of God. And we have freedom. Freedom to live in that grace. Freedom to live in that power of God. Freedom to go out daily and to follow Christ. To walk with him. To walk together on that path to our eternal kingdom. To live the life that he so wants for us. A life that is filled with blessings and filled with his riches and we know how to do that it is very clear for us what we are not to do Paul said to the churches in Galatia the acts of the sinful nature are obvious and you and I can point those sins out at a drop of a hat especially in other people but sometimes it's hard for us to look inwardly, to look at our own selves and see that, yes, I'm a jealous person sometimes. Sometimes I have selfish ambition because it's all about me. Sometimes I have rage. Sometimes I'm envious. Sometimes I've had too much to drink. I'm not a perfect person. But sometimes it's really hard to admit that to ourselves. I pray that it's never hard to take that to our Lord, to the one who has forgiven our sins, to place it at his feet, and to know that he forgives me, that he loves me, and he reminds me of that every day with the blessings that he puts in my life. That he wants me to live in the freedom that I have. To walk by the Spirit. To stop this flesh that wants to corrupt everything. That so easily can get off track. I mean, and if we think that isn't the truth, we have two great examples from our lessons from Scripture this morning. Elijah. Elijah, this person that we see as the powerful man of God. I mean, who of us wouldn't have loved to have been there with all of those prophets of Baal when they're weeping and wailing and crying and cutting themselves to get their altar to come on fire? And nothing happens. 
And with all the drama and grandeur, Elijah pours water on his, douses it, and it's consumed in this great blaze. This man of God, we hear saying, I'm the only one left. I'm the only believer. You have nobody else here. I did this. I did that. I did this work for you. And now I just want to sit here and die. And who of us hasn't felt that way sometimes in our life of faith? Alone? We're the only one who follows God's will? I'm the only one who does any work around here. Nobody else helps out. And maybe we even have gotten to the point where we think it would be better if I wasn't here. But yet God came to Elijah and he said, get up. Go back. You have work to do. And realize that there are 7,000 others of you out there who are living in faith. Sometimes we come short-sighted. We become too focused on ourselves. God's word reminds us we need to realize that we are in this together as brothers and sisters in Christ. And how important that is. But then, when we realize that we're working as a group, sometimes we act like James and John in our epistle, in our gospel lesson for today. Jesus was traveling up to Jerusalem. He stops in Samaritan town, wants to go in, and they won't allow him to. You know why? Because they were racists. He was going up to Jerusalem. They didn't like people who went up to Jerusalem. Stay out of town. What do James and John, those great disciples, want to do? Let's just burn them. God, let's just pray that God opens up the heavens and dumps fire and brimstone on them. Jesus said, we're just going to move on. But how often aren't we the ones who respond with the law of God and the fire and the wrath? Without a bit of love. Without a bit of just saying, I can move on. You don't want me here? Okay, I'm going to go. You don't want to hear God's word? I'll leave. Maybe someone else is going to come and bring it to you that you will listen to. Trust in God. Paul makes an interesting point about bitterness and about the law in our hearts. He says, I want to warn you. Because if you are biting and picking on each other the whole time, watch out because you just may eat each other up. You keep biting at someone and biting at someone and you're arguing and you're filled with anger and not with love, you're going to destroy what you have. If in your marriage all you can do is pick apart the other person, your marriage isn't going to last. If the friends in your life, all you see are their faults and all you can do is rip them apart, whether to their face or behind their back, you're not going to have that friendship. It's true of our parent and child relationships. It's true of every relationship in our life. And as the children of God, who are so quick to point out all of those sins of the flesh, maybe we should start opening our eyes and looking for those gifts of the Spirit and pointing them out in other people and encouraging them in other people. Love, joy, peace, kindness, forbearance, self-control. These are the things that God wants from us and he also wants for us as brothers and sisters in Christ, to be walking together, to be living that life of faith, to be encouraging each other, to be loving to each other, to be kind and 
to have forbearance with each other. Those are all wonderful things. And we don't do it in order to gain God's favor or gain God's pleasure. Or we don't look for ways that we can be sneaky about it in our life just to come up with some self-righteousness of our own. Boy, I was good today. I found each of the gifts of the Spirit in myself. It's not what God wants from us. He has called us to be free in Jesus Christ. He has given us the Holy Spirit to instruct us and to lead us and to be with us to show the blessings that we have in our lives. Because we have the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit and walk with Him. Amen.